In part four of this video series, we're going to focus on the upper hull. And in front of you, I have the components laid out that we are now going to build into our boat. Let's start from the top right. That's the light holders for the front lights, where we're going to put our LEDs in. Then we have the LED kit. You might find it easier to buy ready-mades. For the backlights, they are ready-made, so we just have to mount them. And for the upper hull, we will need a lot of cable. I have chosen 22 and 18 AVG. Then we have the handle, carrying handle for the boat. Next, we have our aviation plug socket and some 3.5 mm boot connectors. Then we have a ready-made RPSMA of antenna cable. And I also printed a lot of uh, zip anchors and we need some zip ties to them as well. Before we move on, what exactly is an RPSMA antenna? Uh, let's have a look at see how we can identify it. First, we have the socket to be mounted in our upper hull. Notice that this has a pin. This is an RPSMA socket. Next, in the other end of the cable, this is going to go into our Wi-Fi booster. It has no pin. If you look at the Wi-Fi booster, you'll notice there's one uh, part going to the antenna. And if you look at that, this also has a pin and then everything will fit together. First up is the front lights. As I stated before, you might find it far easier to buy ready-made LEDs with the wires, but I personally prefer to build them. So let's just quickly explain how you do that. To build the LED, you need an LED and a resistor. And please note the long tag on the LED. That's the positive end. That's where you solder on a resistor. Soldering a LED is not a big deal. Uh, snip off some of the ends on the resistor and, and solder. And before you continue, make sure to test it that it works. Finally, we add the shrink tube. And before mounting them into the holders, make sure to test, test, test all of the LEDs before you glue anything in. Next up is to glue in the LEDs in the holders and to paint the backside. On the backside, there is some protective film. You just peel it off. But if you look here on the backside, it's almost like a mirror and you're going to have problems to fix the paint. So let's do something about that first. Here I have the second holder. I have already sanded it with some very fine paper, 800. That should be enough. And then all around the front part of the light holder, I've thoroughly taped not to spill any paint at all. Mounting the LEDs in the holder is really straightforward. You just tab with super glue, push them in and hold, and that's really it. We talked about sanding. Now let's talk about cleaning. I prefer to use the Tech 7 cleaner. And before painting anything, before gluing anything, make sure to properly clean the equipment. Get rid of dust, get rid of oil, fat and everything. If not, your components may loosen and you have a disaster afterwards. So much better. Now we're ready to paint. I'm not going to bore you with the painting. I use spray paint, silver metallic and spray the backside three or four times. I now also need to prepare and mount my aviation plug, the socket. You can see the white spot here. Look at this white spot also on the plug, easy to mount. I have already prepared this uh, aviation socket with three wires, each wire with a 3.5 millimeter bullet plug at the end. This plug goes in to each of the connectors uh, for the electronic speed controller. So let's have a quick look into how I actually prepared my socket. First of all, the cable ends. And as you see in this picture, the soldering plugs needs to be tinned. 
With all parts thinned, I can carefully uh, solder on each of the wires without melting the plastic in the socket. Then we protect each of the wires using some shrink tube. As the thrower is a power consumer, I will use the plugs, the male plugs of the 3.5 mm bullet connectors. To solder the bullet connectors, I need to fill the cup with tin, and then such a tool comes really handy. And finally, I press the other ends of the cables into the floating solder, and everything is done. With all parts prepared, it's time to drill some holes. And before I do that, I measure. Here is the middle point of the back for the backlights. Then I found a good spot to mount the handle. That's 32 millimeters from the bottom. I will put the antenna socket in the middle of the recess between the bay tray and the battery lid. To make perfect round holes, such a kit with cone drill bits and measured hole diameters comes very handy. But first of all, we need to make some measurements. For the antenna socket 6.24, I will use a 7 mm hole. The backlights, a 10 mm hole will be perfect. For the handle, a 10 mm hole is also a good choice. I would need 20 mm holes for the power plug. Not ideal, but so it is. And finally, 13 mm hole for the socket for the thrower. And now we have all the parts mounted. I still have to glue the front lights so they're fixed. And then when it's done, I'll connect all of the light cables and make one single connector from the upper hull to the under hull to enable all of the lightings. The antenna cable will then go into the Wi-Fi booster and the thrower cables will then go into the uh, bullet connectors for the electronic speed controller. And also I will plug in the power cables from this on-off switch. So everything is now ready and we have connections that we can disconnect if we ever need to uh, dismantle the boat and separate the upper from the lower hull. When we mount the gear in our boat, we must take great, great care to make everything waterproof. Let's start with the backlights. By adding glue on the outside and press it through, you will make a seal that fills the hole. Then fully tighten the nut from the inside. Then we wipe off the surplus glue and rinse with some Tech 7 cleaner and we have a perfect seal from the outside. On the inside, we also add glue around the nuts and around the cable and now we have a really good seal for the lights. Next up is the antenna plug. We use the same principle. Add glue to the antenna plug, then press it from inside to outside, so we see that the glue comes through. Then we tighten down using the nut from the outside, and wipe off using a cleaner. Make sure that the threads are free of glue. And then finally, we add a healthy portion of glue also on the inside, covering everything. Next up is our front lights, and we're going to follow the exact same procedure. First, we add glue around the edges of the front light holders. Then firmly press the front lights into the hole so that the glue squeezes out on the sides. And finally, we wipe clean around the edges on the outside. Next up is our on-off switch. Let's take the um, cabling harness and then remove the uh, on-off switch, and then we mount it into one of the holes on the outside, and then tighten the nut. As this will sit under the battery cover, I will not care to waterproof this part. Then the time has come to our carrying handle. Uh, this is a little more difficult to uh, mount. You have to put it through on the one side and then wiggle it through 
on the other and be careful not to break it. As the handle is now in place, we can fix it on both sides using a healthy portion of glue that covers the openings. And finally, it's time for our bait thrower socket. We use the same principle here. Just push it through. Remember to put the white dot on the top so it's easy to mount later. And then from the inside, mount the nut and do all of the same waterproofing as you did for all of the other parts. And now we have soldered a little, gathered the wires here behind into one single wire going in front and then joining, joining, joining cables with increasingly thicker cable ending up in this plug that will go to the underhull. Obviously, you could have saved a lot of time here if you just use some Wago connectors instead. Uh, but it's no doubt in my mind, soldering is the long lasting way to do this. So let's just look at how I do it. I strip off around two centimeters of isolation and then I'm going to join two thinner wires into one slightly thicker wire. I then press the wires into each other and it seems like a mess, but if you then use two fingers and twist and twist and twist, you end up with a nice clean joint. And then be careful not to damage your boat with your soldering iron, just fill the joint with solder. And finally, we add shrink tube to protect the joints. In the front of the boat, I was even able to join three cables into one, like this. And in my personal opinion, the result came out just fine. The battery lids is the last part of the upper hull. If I remove this now and look at the underside, I can see that I have already glued in the inserts and it sits really well. And on the outside, I have glued on some foam. And when I press the lid down again, thanks to the inset and that foam, it sits really well. So let's have a look on how I did this. The parts needed are the lids, uh, the insets and some foam. The foam I use here is three millimeter thick and six millimeter wide. First, I apply the foam gently around the edges. Make sure to press it firmly against the hole so it sits good. Then I put in the insets into the opening and add some glue on either side. And finally, I press the lid down and let it sit to dry. Final advice on the antenna. To get really good coverage on your Wi-Fi, it's important that the antenna and the socket is properly connected. In this antenna socket, you have some washers and then you may have a thick hull. If the socket gets too short, then you can't turn that antenna fully down. You need to have a small, small gap between the antenna and the nut fixing the antenna bow. If you don't have that, then you will get bad Wi-Fi. Have you ever been on your knees behind the boat and wanted to put the hook and lead inside the bait tray only to discover that your remote is on your chair or your tablet is far away? Wouldn't it be great if you had a button behind that boat so you can just push it and the bait tray opened anyway. Well, let's see how we can make such a solution. Let's start with our pixhook and our servo. <coughs> the servo is connected to the correct port and we want now want to introduce this push button to open or close the bait tray. If you look underneath, you'll see NC, NO and C. We're going to come back to those terms are later. 
And we need to split the signal. We're going to use a standard Y cable here. And in addition, we're going to use a server reverser that reverses the servo signal. Let's explain how you implement this solution. Uh, we start off with the Pixhawk and then we connect to the servo using the remote or using the app button. Uh, we can now open or close the bay tray using that servo. Let's stick in the Y cable. The solution works just like before. And to the other end of the Y cable, we can attach the servo reverser. So we have a button. It has a common port normally closed and normally open. And how this works is that when the button is off, well, then the normally closed and the common port are both connected. But when we push our button, then it, the common button is instead connected with the normally open button. Let's do the signaling first from the straight pixel connection. We're going to move that yellow cable so the Input from the Y cable comes to the normally connected and the output from the common goes into the servo. And then on the servo reverser, we can remove that uh, red and black cable. We don't need it. We only need the signal and that signal we connect to normally open. And that's the solution. Now it works. When the button is not pushed, well, then the switch is off it is in normally closed state and the bay tray is closed. And when you then sit behind the boat and push that button, well, the normally open and common port gets connected and the bay tray opens. Using this tip, you can drill yet another hole in the hull, install that button, waterproof it like you did for all the other parts. And this concludes the video about the upper hull. It is finished. In the next video, we're going to look into the under hull.